Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. We're going to be having a conversation with Dr. Atul Kamath. He's joining us here as Director, Center for Hip Preservation at the Cleveland Clinic, and a Rosa Hip Developer Surgeon. He's joining us here to talk about the recent FDA clearance of the Rosa Hip System. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Kamath. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Well, of course, I did mention your position at the Cleveland Clinic. Give us a brief look into your professional background and talk about your role at the Cleveland Clinic briefly, if you would. So I'm a staff surgeon at the Cleveland Clinic. I do hip and knee reconstruction. Uh, My practice involves uh, care across the spectrum of hip and knee uh, care from early interventions uh, and hip preservation strategies all the way up to primary and revision joint replacement Uh, My background is in training in young hip surgery, both in the U.S. as well as Europe, uh, and I bring this perspective uh, to the Rosa uh, hip uh, platform and Rosa Robotics uh, across the spectrum of care. You know, when we hear about hip replacement, uh, well, I'll speak for myself. I automatically get a a picture of an an older man or woman who's um, needing a hip replacement. They've fallen or something like that. But you deal in hip replacements no matter what the cause. Is that correct? Yes, I I do early intervention strategies, things like hip preservation, uh, hip arthroscopy, dysplasia management with osteotomies. But I would agree, you know, the older, the more traditional demographic has been older patients undergoing hip replacement. But actually, the fastest growing demographic now is folks in their 50s, 60s, sometimes even in their 40s. So patients have high demands, high expectations. And again, there's a number of reasons why the demographic uh, is shifting for joint replacement, some of the younger population. So I treat patients uh, based on the quality of their cartilage in their hip. And so there's younger patients with poor quality cartilage that need replacement. Um, Of course, I seek preservation strategies when I can. But um, and again, there's older patients who we optimize as best as possible. So joint replacement uh, traditionally uh, is being expanded to different and younger populations. How new is robotic hip surgeries? So robotics has been around for some time. Uh, With respect to the Rosa Hip platform, uh, we've recently obtained FDA clearance uh, this year. Uh, But a lot of the foundation for the Rosa Hip platform uh, has been seen in different techniques uh, through uh, a number of years now in development. Uh, And also Zimmer Biomed through their portfolio has explored robotics in other fields uh, in, in joint replacement, such as robotic knee surgery, partial knee replacement, some 2D and 3D planning uh, methodologies. So a lot of the stepping stones and the foundation has been years in the making. Uh, and uh, while the Rosa hip s- uh, system excited to, uh, you know, have FDA clearance this year, a lot of the stepping stones have been, you know, a work in progress for some time uh, to really get a product that is, you know, surgeon focused uh, and then also will help patients in the long run. So it, it's really a development and a foundational approach uh, that has been taken to this particular platform. Well, let's talk about some of the benefits of the ROSA hip system as opposed to some of the traditional treatments that you say the uh, ROSA is based upon. So the ROSA hip system uh, was <clears throat> designed to be seamlessly integrated into uh, the workflow for direct anterior approach surgeons. There's a, a particular approach to the hip called the anterior approach, which is quite popular in the United States as well as worldwide. Um, and depending on your the way you look at it, or different studies actually are using this approach. I teach a lot of residents and fellows, and <clears throat> I would also say the majority of them go out into practice using this particular approach to the hip. So we sought to design a robotic system that would seamlessly integrate um, with this approach. Uh, which is a minimally invasive approach to performing total hip replacement, but also uh, really use tools that are commonly available to us. Uh, The Rosa hip system uses a fluoroscopy machine uh, for guidance of the robotic arm. Uh, And this is very different and a a, a very radical and new and improved approach compared to using other technologies such as obtaining a CT scan or putting pins or arrays throughout the pelvis to guide a robotic system. We're simply using fluoroscopy-based tools uh, within a workflow that's common and understood by the majority of uh, orthopedic surgeons when performing total hip replacement. How does the ROSA system affect the planning of particular procedures? How does it affect the planning among the surgical team? Yeah, so actually that's a great question. You know, the planning, you know, obviously starts uh, prior to the surgery. So the surgeon uh, and the team 
has the ability to understand the patient's unique anatomy. Uh, you know, every hip is like a fingerprint. I mean, it has a unique character. So through digital templating, uh, the surgeon is allowed to create a personalized surgical plan based on that patient's unique anatomy. Um, and then that plan is fed directly into the robotic system. And so there's real-time feedback to the surgeon based on this preoperative plan uh, so that during intraoperative execution, that is also kind of uh, integrated and linked. And that surgeon has real-time feedback on, you know, concepts uh, without getting too much into the weeds, you know, things like pelvic tilt, mm -hmm. uh, leg length, offset, all through this one planner system, uh, which is which feeds data from preoperative data into the robotic system interoperatively. Uh, and then the robotic assistance to guide really accurate acetabular component orientation, as well as give you feedback for how the overall construct uh, has been performed by the surgeon. Then that data is taken actually from the time of the surgery and fed into different reports through what we would call ortho intel or this really digital data ecosystem that's been formulated, which is really part of this ZB Edge kind of umbrella. That data really is helpful in helping future patients, but also helps inform the surgeon on how uh, how they uh, were able to perform an accurate uh, and reproducible hip replacement for that particular patient. What about the potential of ROSA being used as a, an initial training tool for those surgeons who are being newly introduced to robotic surgery? Or is this something that is best suited for those who have some knowledge of robotic procedures? Yeah, so that's an excellent question. I, you know, we, you know, I, I train uh, folks of, you know, I train other surgeons, I train fellows, I train residents. Robotics has given us a window into actually what we're what the very highly experienced or master surgeons doing at the time of surgery really gives us very actionable insights, visualizations, other tools that can help novice surgeons and trainees really visualize what we're doing. I think it helps reduce outliers in terms of component positioning and accuracy, and it gives that real-time feedback so the surgeon or the trainee uh, or someone new to robotics really you know, can have that real-time feedback on how they're performing at the time of the surgery rather than after the surgery. Um, I, I, I think certainly the ROSA HIP uh, application um, has it really, it would be an easy kind of transition for folks who are even new to robotic assisted surgery. They can adapt their anterior approach, fluoroscopic based approach to standard HIP replacement. And the robot, uh, in terms of preoperative planning and intraoperative execution, is really an extension of that surgeon. So the surgeon drives the procedure, the surgeon is in full control of the case. The robotic assistance there to help improve accuracy and then really uh, help deliver real-time data uh, in a time-efficient manner. Well, give us a website where we can go and learn more about Zimmer. So the, the uh, umbrella of technologies under ZB Edge as well as the ROSA Total Hip platform, uh, those uh, uh, materials can all be ac accessed through Zimmer Biomet's uh, suite of website uh, materials. Um, and I would also say there are a number of other materials that are uh, available through uh, outlets such as ViewMedi, which is a, a video platform, uh, and other uh, digital uh, media platforms where you can uh, reference the surgeon um, and the caregiver and the teams, the surgical teams can reference things like short uh, surgical videos or abbreviated surgical techniques, as well as discussions around some of the philosophy behind the development of the platform uh, and really where the future of this technology will take us. So I think there's a wealth of resources that are uh, available um, through Zimmer Biomet uh, uh, Educational Institute, as well as alternative formats such as ViewMedi and other forums as well. Dr. Kamath, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with us this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. And again, we're excited to uh, showcase this new technology and really affect uh, the way pa patients uh, receive care and surgeons perform uh, hip replacement. So thanks again for your time. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Atul Kamath. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.